Hello and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. I am just here with an update from the Warhammer community on Necromunda, the Aranthian Succession Part 2, Vaults of Temenos, which is going to be a new book released for Necromunda narrative uh, sort of campaign, I suppose, um, and the follow-up to the previous Cinderac Burning book, um, where uh, the current law of Necromunda has been completely overhauled um, and whether you're down with it or not, this is the second part of that book. I believe there were supposed to be three of these books. Um, the time in between this second book and the first one, um, Cinderac Burning, is huge. They should have probably uh, released it a bit sooner than this because I feel like half of the stuff that they're talking about on this article is stuff that we already know about. Um, but let's just go ahead and look at what it's sort of saying so far. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't buy a copy of Cinderac Burning um, because quite frankly I don't have the money to be able to afford these books unless I really really want them. That one <coughs> didn't really tickle my fancy as much as I thought so I did I did actually have a look at it and read, I read it through and um, uh, I just I'm not really a fan of the sort of current Necromunda setting if I'm completely honest. I prefer as an arbitra arbitrator myself to um, strip things back and make things a bit more like old Necromunda I suppose in my campaigns at least. Um, I just prefer to have the game a bit more stripped back. What the campaign does for this is it's really, really bloated and massive and all the gangs are huge and it's pretty much turning it into kind of like 40k really in some ways. Um, but, you know, you might disagree with me on that one, but I just feel like the, um, the lore in these books is great and it's really rich and it's really cool uh, and it's really, really um, good to read, but my head's not... Um, totally in it I'll, I'll be honest anyway i'm um, looking at the second book i'm sure many of you will be very excited that the, the news of this has come out because we have been waiting a long time like i just said um and um really what you're going to get in this book uh, similar to cinderac burning is an awful lot of dense and sort of rich lore i suppose um which uh which is great if you're really into that um i just feel like from the look of this article of course, they're not telling you everything that's in the book, but from the look of this article, it does look like it is mainly a law book with very little content otherwise. Um, so you, get, you, you will get rules for the second part of the campaign, which includes benefits for aligning with certain factions. I'm not sure what that really means, whether that's talking about guilds and stuff. I'm not really sure whether they're going over that again. Um, but it, it says quite clearly here, including benefits for aligning with certain factions. Um, maybe you can ally with other houses or something. Maybe they're going to bring in a mechanic for that. That's kind of interesting. You've also got holy relics and sainted objects that instill powerful boons and rules for designing your very own spiritual paraphernalia, which is interesting as well. Um, again, not really sure what that means, but that sounds kind of cool. Um, there are seven, seven narrative scenarios themed around the events of the Great Pilgrimage, um, which you can weave into your campaign or play as one-off skirmish games. So it does sound like those scenarios can be played on a smaller scale as well, perhaps. So I'm interested to see what exactly those um, scenarios have. I mean, at the moment we've got, what, 120 scenarios or something that have come out so far for Necromunda. And many of them, honestly, many of them are quite similar. So it's, it's hard to think of new... Uh, and inventive ways to bring out scenarios, so I just pretty much design my own these days. Um, but um, the next thing that you have in this is uh, the Dramatis Personae, which I think we've seen most of models for, in fact. So we've got listed here in the article, we've got the, the Prophet of Redemption, which is a new guy that we haven't actually seen yet, um, and that sounds really cool. We've also got Axon Hammer, a terrible name, which is a Goliath with a huge Mohican and a bolt gun, I believe. We've got Durgan Killfist, again, terrible name, with a guy with a giant uh, meat tenderizer on the end of his fist and a, a sort of skeletal looking staff. Again, honestly, I think it's a terrible model. I think it's a terrible name. I just can't get down with some of the new Forge World stuff, to be honest. It's just a bit like... Oh, it's a bit too much for me. Um, and then you've got Scrutinator Primus Surveillance, who's been out for years, actually. Um, she's a cop with a cyber doggo um, and uh, already has a model, which is actually really nice. Uh, a good addition to the Enforcers as well. But it looks like this book will be centering around Cordor, particularly, and, um, and Enforcers, actually, which is really interesting. So... Cordor and Enforcers, I think many of you out there think that Enforcers probably do need a little bit of love. 
Enforcers have been, uh, you know, I think for many people they find them a little bit boring, a little bit dull. I think that's the whole point with Enforcers, to be honest. I've played Enforcers and I've really enjoyed them, but they are quite linear and quite one-dimensional. So I think this book is going to uh, maybe just give them a few little extra tricks and whatnot. We've got the um, Sanctioner automa Automata, which we've seen recently um, previewed on Warhammer Community as well, which is the... Uh, official brute for enforcers but we've also got rules here in this book for hard case cyber mastiffs which um, I'm not sure whether an errata or not but in my version of the rule book that I've got here hard case cyber mastiffs have been available for enforcers for quite a while now um, so maybe they're just making that official now I'm not really sure um, you've got of course the corridor stuff here as well um, so you've got this this um, you know redemptionist leader type character that's, that we don't really know much about who's going to be the sort of center of the narrative of this book. But we've also, of course, got the um, Cordor um, and Redemptionist Road Preachers, which sounds really cool. So we've got the, you know, their Ash Wastes. Um, I guess the Road Preachers are probably going to be the Ash Wastes, um, you know, unique um, drivers and whatnot crew. And you've also got the, the Way Brethren as well, um, who pilot the Ridge Walkers, as well as uh, new vehicle gang tactics in here as well. Um, but it sounds like the book has a teeny bit of Cordor stuff, a teeny bit of Enforcer stuff that we already knew about. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of the Cordor chicken walkers at all. I find them absolutely ridiculous, so I won't be, I won't be partaking in that one. Um, and I think if you're really, really, really into all this current law about, you know, Helmore being assassinated and all this kind of stuff and uh, everything blowing out of proportion and turning into a massive massive load of, uh, of drama then great pick up this book but it sounds to me like they're really really milking it and they're not actually putting a huge amount of content into this if you ask me call me a cynic um i just am but um it's not one of the books that i'm excited about buying i'll probably just wait until i've um, seen somebody else's copy to, to make that judgment but there is a little bit of exciting stuff in it in terms of you know those little details i just spoke about with the um you know with the uh, the, the allying of certain, aligning with certain factions and holy relics and all that sort of stuff. But um, other than that, nothing here really excites me at all, I'll be honest. And I think had it, had it been released a bit sooner, uh, there probably would have been a bit more excitement around this, at least from my corner. But um, I think it's just sort of a bit late now uh, in the day for this release. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. Again, I don't want to sound too cynical and stuff, but I just feel like the amount of books that they've released for Necromunda, they really, really are milking it, and it's kind of turning into 40K in terms of all the uh, codexes and all that. But again, um, I'm just a, a cynical bastard, cynical old bastard, so it is what it is. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Um, please do like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace out.